So I want to just throw out there the question, who here is really ready to make a change? Raise your hands. Who here has ever felt like the relationships they were in were toxic and they just kind of keep repeating the same cycles over and over again? Who's tired of it? All right. Well, you've come to the right place. Um, tonight is our final two steps in our six step process called recognizing and overcoming toxic relationships so you can live your best life now. The, step, the, sorry, the six step process. Um, and again, we're f doing the final two tonight. So my intention for this to do this webinar series was to really go in detail and share really important information that you could use now. Uh, you know, some of you might have been doing this over and over again. Some of you, this might be your first time experiencing unhealthy relationships. Some of you might have been doing this for 20 years. It doesn't matter where you are in the cycle, but tonight is the night that I would like to get moving in the direction of it ending. I don't want you to continue those, this cycle of unhealthy, toxic relationships. So please, you know, if there's any questions, this, the whole purpose for me is to be here for you. So, um, by the end of tonight, you're going to have some really great information to use. So I just want to do, I'm going to do a really quick story of why I got into this. For those of you who have seen me before, you already know. Um, I spent 15 plus years going from one unhealthy relationship and to another one until one day I decided that I was going to get a divorce and make a major change. And the issue was that my last major relationship, my ex-husband was physically and psychologically abusive. And on our wedding night, he strangled me. And the next five years were spent being worried about getting home, walking on eggshells, being cursed at, yelled at, bitch, cunt, whore were his three favorite words. Those were all things that became normal for me. And a lot of it stemmed for me was my background, how I had grown up. And not that my dad spoke to my mom that way, but there definitely was a lot of arguing. So I felt this uncomfortable feeling. And that's the reason why I call um, my book and my business Being Loved Shouldn't Hurt because there is that feeling for a lot of us that love is uncomfortable and love has a lot of discomfort um, so and anxiety provoking. So when I decided to get a divorce, things didn't go well right away. Um, he stalked me, he harassed me, he called guys that I was dating and told them that I had an STD or he would find them at work and tell them that we were trying to work things out or anything to try to sabotage future relationships. And then he actually started threatening me also. And this was me with between orders of protection. And then at, at one point, the court did not want to give me an order of protection anymore. So that was really upsetting. I was like, hey, I don't know really what he's capable of. So I, I was trying to be friendly with him um, because I, I didn't want him to be angry. And so after that, I had some legal issues and my grandmother passed away. I had started dating a guy and he ghosted me. So he just disappeared. And let's see, I got a blood clot and I lost it. I went through a major depression. I lost 25 pounds. I couldn't sleep. I would come home from work, put on my pajamas and I would lay in the fetal position, just kind of staring at the wall. Um, when I would get enough energy, I would watch self-help videos, anything to try to get me out. And I would say to myself, this will pass, this too shall pass, this will pass. And I was just trying to live every day. And the, the feeling in my chest was, was like a brick was on it. And I, I couldn't breathe. You know, having a conversation with anyone was painful. Going to work was painful. But I, I didn't miss any work. It was the only thing that I had to kind of keep me grounded in this world. And so <laughs> it was the end of 2013, beginning of 2014, I got pink eye, very like second or third day of the, the new year. And then three days later, I sprained my ankle. And I sprained it at work as a teacher. So at the school, called my ex-husband because he was on my list of contacts. And they let him know that I was going to the emergency room because I'd been injured. And he showed up, which was very nice of him. Um, and I just remember being in the emergency room with my ankle completely swollen, looked like a softball was on the side of it. And I was looking around and, the, and this is actually kind of funny. The reason why I sprained my ankle is because the way I was sitting in my chair, 
I was kind of, I was so tired because I wasn't sleeping. The way I was sitting in my chair, I had like put my head back and closed my eyes for a few minutes when I had a, a, a break and my leg fell asleep. And I had to get up to start getting ready for the next group of kids that were coming in. And when I went to get up, since my leg was asleep, my leg gave out and that's how I sprained my ankle. Like it was, I was really laying on the ground. And I was like, really? <laughs> I just, I just, I, I definitely sprained my ankle. When I looked down at my ankle, I was like, this is bad. I actually continued to teach for the, the last period because I didn't want to miss any school. And I, I went to the emergency room and I'm sitting in there with my ex-husband and I look around and I just start laughing and the doctors are like, okay, what's wrong with you? And you know, they, they do testing and, and whatever. They're like, make sure it's not broken. They're like, all right, well, you have a pretty bad sprain, whatever level four out of five or whatever, whatever it was, it was a pretty bad sprain. They're like you're gonna, next, next six weeks, you're gonna be in a air cast. All right, so I'm laughing and crying at the same time. And, and my ex-husband kind of looks at me and the doctors just walk away like, what's this lady's lost her mind. And I say out loud, I get it. I need to save myself. I don't ever want to do this again. And I did this somehow. I, I know that I did this. I know that I can get myself out. I need to stop waiting for someone else to come and save me. And I don't know why being in the emergency room in that really weird, awkward situation brought that out in me, but it really made me realize that I could never go through any of this ever again. I had to make changes because I didn't want to continue the cycle. I had been doing it for so long and I was so tired of it, I couldn't continue. So I started to make changes. And, and like I, I told the story yesterday in a little bit more depth of going on my passion quest and rediscovering myself and all the great, the great strategies that I would like you to use for your healing journey. I did all of those things and then I was lucky enough to attract, well to find and attract my husband, my now husband, who's an amazing, wonderful partner. And you know, through friendship and getting to know each other, I learned who he really was. And I was able to find the man of my dreams where had I not made those changes, I would still be stuck going to my crying place, the place that I would go to when my ex-husband would be home or when there'd be two weeks of fighting or there would have just been a fight and I needed to get out of the house. You know, having that place to cry. You know, I was thinking about that again today, how kind of foreign that is to me now. To have to go to a place, to have a place to go to just cry your eyes out that you use on a regular basis. And, you know, some of you, please let me know if you've experienced anything like that before, but it's that, that special place you go to that helps you, you know, deal with things that are going on. And it's sad that I spent so much time there, that I spent so much time even going to bed early with my ex-husband and then crying myself to sleep and really changing who I was and getting to a place that I never thought was possible for me. So for those of you who are in that low place, for those of you who have ever experienced that, I know that you don't want to live there. I know that you would like to move forward. So tonight, I'm going to share the final two steps with you. So. For the past two nights, um, we've talked about, and just let me make sure that I, I say it, one of them is to ask yourself the question, how did I get here? And to really look and analyze you know, your upbringing, experiences that you've had, um, different emotions, your self-esteem, all of those things, and kind of really look at all of that and see how that's affected the way that you got here. Because remember, we're not blaming you for how this person treated you. It is, an, it is not you it is them. It is their fault for treating you badly. You, however, have the power on the decision on what you're going to make from that. So we talked really about how did I get here. The second one was create a support team. So really part of the healing is making sure that you have your team. Um, I, for myself, was it was a therapist. I had a coach. I had a, a few select close friends. Um, I, I found that too many people knowing information didn't really help, but I also really tried to only surround myself with positive people. So if there were people that were giving me misinformation or were um, just hurtful, if there was any you know, drama that they were trying to bring up, I, I really stayed away from that. That was not part of my support team. Um, and, yours, and also my, my yoga instructor and, and going to meditation and, and reconnecting to my, to my spirituality. 
Um, and when I say spirituality, it doesn't necessarily mean Christian or Jewish or Muslim or whatever. When I say spirituality, for me, it was reconnecting to a higher purpose than myself, reconnecting to other people. And that was a really amazing part of, of that journey. But that was all part of the creating my team and also my passion quest, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, the reconnecting to you. So that's part passion quest, self-esteem, figuring out how you tick, what you do, what's important to you. Those are all things because what, what happens is, is that we get so trapped in the cycle of being defensive. You know, how's he gonna act today? And I keep saying he, for any guys who are watching, this could be the other way around. I'm only saying from my perspective, he. Um, so please don't be offended if I keep saying he, this is not saying all guys are like this in any way, shape or form. Women can do this as well. But from my experience, it was men, all right? So really looking at who you are without the relationship. Because a lot of people will go from one relationship to another one, and that's a recipe for disaster. Because if you don't reconnect to you, you're not going to attract the right partner for yourself. And you're not gonna be the right person for you because you're not gonna know who you are. So really, really looking at reconnecting yourself, figuring out who you are, finding out what your passions are, what you're excited about, um, and creating your own life on your own two feet without worrying about depending on someone else for your own happiness. And that's really, really, pivotal. Um, the other one is overcoming limiting beliefs. So those beliefs in your head that, you know, I'm not capable, I'm not smart enough, I'm not pretty, I'm too heavy, I'm too skinny, I'm too old, I'm not educated enough, whatever these things are, women should be this way, men should be this way, um, relationships are hard, you know, all those things, they're the BS belief systems, but you can take it the other way too. Um, those belief systems really keep us trapped. So making sure that we look at those, analyze those. I talked about journaling yesterday, analyzing those belief systems and seeing how did all of those things bring you to where you are and maybe refocusing your, um, what you're paying attention to so that you can focus on the stuff that's actually going to help you move forward. So that's another one. All right. So tonight I'm excited. Um, I would like to share with you about trusting your gut and setting boundaries. And these are two things, actually, I'm going to be speaking at an event um, over the summer, and one of the things they want me to talk about is trusting your gut. So if you're someone who's had issues with that, or you're like, I don't really know what you're talking about, this is going to be really, this is something that's very common. A lot of people are having this issue, um, and, and I did too. So trusting your gut, we have this natural ability to sense what feels good for us and what doesn't feel good for us. And for me, you know, no matter what types of experiences you've had before, there's your gut versus what is the societal norms or what we think in our society we should behave in a, in a certain way or what we should do. So, you know, again, those limiting beliefs of, well, I'm a female, I'm a, you know, I need to do this, this, and this. And for me, the, the interesting thing is that I had, I had met my ex-husband. There were some red flags right away. And I was turning 28. And so we started dating. And he asked me to marry him when I was 29. Now, for me, I was brought up in a household where my parents got married. They had three children. They stayed together through thick and thin, even though there was a lot of discord between them and they did everything they could to continue working on the relationship and and I was really it was ingrained in me get a good job have a career make good money and have a family get married of course get married first and then have a family those were all things that were really well ingrained into my brain so here I was and I had also you know in school remember hearing that you know you need to have children before you're 35 because after 35 there can be all sorts of issues with pregnancies conceiving issues with a child whatever so in my mind I, my window was I need to get married 30 that felt like that was like a deadline in my head that I had created um, and so here I was this was the guy that came around when I was 29 years old I had bad experiences before so the limiting beliefs of you know, relationships are hard, you know, some of this is my fault, you know, all of those different things were coming up in my mind. And he asked me to marry him and I say yes. And the red flags keep coming up. 
I mean, there were things that happened before we got married that I should have been like, get out, get out of here. I mean, even him pressuring me to move in before I was ready is kind of one of those tactics that a lot of people use when they're in this controlling type of mindset, is that even though I was uncomfortable with something, he was pushing what he wanted on me. And because I was not strong enough to say no, I allowed him to push that on me. So here was the deal. I was 29 years old. I had all of these red flags, but I had in my mind the limiting beliefs. My gut was saying, do not marry this guy, but I've got these other beliefs in my head. So bam, I decided to marry him, even though my gut was telling me no. And then of course on the wedding night, he tried to strangle me. And then there was five years of pretty much hell, not the entire, entire time. There was good times too, but it was, it was not a good five years. Some people last way longer than that. Whatever experiences you've had in your life, your gut still really knows the answer. And for a lot of us, because we've had these bad experiences or we have these limiting beliefs, our brain or, or our heart gives us misinformation. And we say, you know what, I'm going to put my gut instinct to the side. One of the things that I was doing when I was in a depression was I was reading, I started, well, when I got out of the depression, I guess I should say, I started reading it when I was in and then I got out of it. Um, the Celestine Prophecy, and I brought up, up, I brought up this book the other day. Um, the Celestine Prophecy, great book, um, but one of the things that they talked about was energies and attracting, you know, when, when you're doing, when you're following the right path, you can feel the energy change. And when it, you're following your gut, it's actually so much easier than when you ignore it. So when you're following now, and again, I'm not saying that making a decision and following throughout doesn't hurt sometimes. Even You know it's the right answer. You might feel badly about making the decision, but it's still the right decision. Breaking up with the wrong guy that doesn't feel right for you, it fe might feel like that hurts, but you know deep down it's the right decision. If you follow that gut instinct right away, that'll save you a very long time, a lot of time wasted. So honing in on that gut instinct, figuring out that, you know, hey, I might need help reminding myself how to think clearly through things. I might have to remind myself that even though my heart hurts, it's okay but your gut is gonna tell you the answer. You know, it's one of the, they talk about all the time right now is that you have your brain up here and then you have your gut. You know, we're talking about gut bacteria and all these different things. Well, there's something in the belly area that tells you, you can feel it pulling. So what I, what I kind of liken it to is that when you, when you know you're doing the right thing, it's almost like a pulling feeling in your chest. When you're doing the wrong thing, it's like you're, you're pushing against a really heavy object and you're forcing it. You're forcing through it. That's not how life should be. Not all the time, not every moment, not every day. You know, there might be times where you don't really feel like doing something and you kind of do it anyway. But when you're following your gut instinct and you're following it, it leads you in that direction. And the cool thing about it is that the more you follow your gut, and you allow it to pull you in the direction that it's taking you, you get more and more opportunities. You start manifesting. That's what they, the big word manifesting you might have heard before. When you're like, wow, how does that person get all these great things? Well, because they're allowing their, themselves to follow their gut instinct and they're, they're being led by something greater than, than themselves. And that gut, gut instinct can really help you through those moments where you're like, oh, but I'm so sad. Oh, but this hurts. But your gut's like, but I'm telling you that this is what you need to do. So follow your gut. You'll find so much more amazing experiences. The universe will bring you more of those, those wonderful experiences if you continue to follow your gut and try to stay away from the things that are really difficult. If you feel like you're pushing up against a brick wall, then it's a probably a good idea to, to reanalyze what you're doing and start changing directions. So that's going to be number five out of our six steps. So following your gut. And again, I could go on for any of these, I could go on for a really, really long time with them. Um, oh, in here, I'm gonna actually put in 
following or setting your boundaries. Um, and I'm putting that in here because setting your boundaries is part of following your gut. And, and here's, here's the deal. For me, when I was younger, I remember, <laughs> or, or someone telling me something about boundaries and I was like, what's a boundary? What does that mean? And it was like this really foreign thing that I could tell someone what I want and that they would respect what I want and that if they didn't, I didn't have to interact with them anymore. And I was like, hmm, that's weird. I had never experienced that. I think it, it was like mid thirties. <laughs> so, and I'm 40 now. So I really, the, the boundary thing was this really new idea for me because I guess when I, I guess before I would say things and they were not respected. My feelings were not respected. And how do you know when you need to set a boundary with someone? If it doesn't feel good, let them know how you feel and let them know your expectation of how you expect them to treat you or speak to you in the future. So for example, you have a friend that makes you wait every single time you make, a, make plans with them. You find the right opportunity and don't put it off because we'll say, oh, it's never the right time. No, it's the right time when you, when you notice that it's an issue. That's when the right time is. So you say to them, hey, Lisa, <laughs> hey, Lisa, um, I've noticed that whenever we make plans, you're always really late and it makes me feel like I'm not very important and that my time doesn't matter. And I know that you don't mean it that way, but I would really appreciate that in the future, if it's going to be an issue for time constraints, maybe we make things a little bit later so that way neither one of us feel like we're rushing or that we're not important because I really want to spend time with you. I really want to see you, but I feel a little bit anxious before you even get here because I've got all these things to do and I'm waiting for you. There we go. You've let them know you're feeling, you've not been accusatory. You're talking about how you'd like to see them change and that's it. Now it's up to her to decide if she wants to or the other person to decide if they're gonna follow that boundary. And then the great thing about boundaries is that you can reassess, maybe change the boundary yourself you can let them know the boundary in a different way. Um, and you can also say to them, you know what, this doesn't seem to be working out. I'm going to have to, and it might not be forever. You know, it might be a friendship or it might be a family member. Like, you know, for both of our sakes, I'm going to need to take a little bit of time, you know, just to get a little breather. This is not anything with you. I just, I really need a little bit of space. And that sometimes that's what you need to kind of both people cool off and, and figure themselves out. And the really great thing about boundaries is that when you start dating someone, this is a really important time to see how people react to your boundaries. None of my exes ever respected my boundaries. I would, I would tell them things. I didn't know they were called boundaries at the time, but they would throw those things right out the window, not respect them at all. If someone you're dating is not respecting any of the boundaries that you're giving and make sure you're being clear, you're being descriptive, you're talking in an I form and you're saying how the feelings are, or whatever the situation is affecting you, but let them know how you're feeling and that way you can get to know each other. That's part of the getting to know each other, that friendship and seeing how you are and seeing how you work together. Because if it doesn't work well as you're dating, it's not gonna get better when you're married. Because if they're not following your boundaries now, and you're clear and, and you're making it yourself well understood, it's not gonna get any better when you get married. And I think we need to get into the mindset change, mindset shift, as you go through these other steps of the process and you really work at your self-esteem and your passion quest and you really get to know who you are and all these great things, we need to stop thinking, oh my God, if I set up a boundary, I'm gonna lose him or I'm gonna lose her. Stop doing that. You're not going to lose them. They're going to lose you. Aren't you worth it? Aren't you a priority? Isn't it worth, don't, don't you feel like you are a prize to be won? And if you don't feel that way, revisit those other steps. Maybe you shouldn't be dating yet because you haven't really fully focused on those other steps they're losing the opportunity of being with you. It's not vice versa, because if they are not respecting you, they do not deserve to be with you. 
I don't care who you are. We all deserve that respect. And letting people know who we are and enforcing our boundaries actually helps with respect. They respect you. Because if you never really verbalize what your boundaries are, they're gonna treat you however they feel like treating you. And it's not gonna be good because they're, gonna, they're not gonna respect who you are because they, you've, you've not given them any boundaries of respect. So it's really, really important to work on those boundaries. It'll help other people respect you. It'll help other people know where you're coming from. And it'll shoo off the wrong people and it will attract the right people. So don't feel it as a loss if people come out of your life because they're not respecting your boundaries. Take it as a gain because you don't have time for all that mess. You don't have time to waste your time. So putting boundaries right there in the following your gut. So that was the, that was the fifth one. All right. The time always goes, goes by so fast. It's already, you know, 30 minutes in. Um, oh, I wanted to share with you at this point because this is actually a really great testimonial that I got from one of my clients that kind of talks about some of the things that I just talked about. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to share it with you. Um, first, let me say that I am truly blessed to have Stephanie in my life. I was in regular survival mode when we met. Her worksheets and check-ins really helped me to think about what I was doing for myself. I had to learn to step back and evaluate what I wanted and what I was doing. I was not doing enough to be where I wanted. Working with Stephanie, I created a vision board and daily journaling so I could have daily visual reminders of my why. Stephanie holds you accountable and yet you don't feel criticized if something doesn't work out as planned. You are encouraged to speak for yourself and voice what is important to you. I was never made to feel foolish or uncomfortable on my journey with her. I have come such a long way thanks to Stephanie. I speak up more, have better confidence, and I easily sort through the issues and figure out what serves me and what doesn't. Understanding I can't control or fix others, which has been a huge weight off. Stephanie and her husband David are a wonderful support system to help you on your journey. So it was a very, very sweet um, testimonial from Robin, who was a client of mine, um, and we worked with her in some pretty life-changing um, things that she was dealing with. So, um, you know, these are the things that happen. You need to have that accountability, that person to help you through. Um, you know, because again, if you could do this by yourself, it, it would be done already. You need to really make sure that you set that good team together. All right, so the final step, we're up to number six, the final step is setting attainable goals. <sighs> goals. We stop trusting ourselves. We feel guilt, we feel shame, we feel like everything is our fault. We're not sure if we know how to make good decisions anymore. How many times did we tell ourselves, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna be different now. And next thing you know, six months have gone by, a year has gone by, and it's the same thing over and over again. I've been there. My clients have been there. A lot of other people you know have been there. In fact, probably everyone has been there at some point. We stopped trusting ourselves. So we need to set attainable goals. So what do I mean by that? All right. I want to lose 25 pounds. I'm going to go to the gym seven days a week, blah, blah, blah. How many times have you heard people say that? I'm going to follow this diet, this new weird fad diet that, that's going, and don't even get me started about some of them and how unhealthy they are, but that's a whole other thing. So I'm going to start this new diet, and I'm going to go to the gym all these days, and I'm going to lose all this weight, and blah, 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 and you go on and on about all these things. And three weeks in, four weeks in, you stop, you stop. You haven't lost the weight, you haven't really been going, you haven't really been into it, and what you say to yourself is, see? I was right. I don't follow through. I am not someone who's ever going to be thin. I'm not someone who's ever going to be healthy. This is just how life is. And you've just now reprogrammed yourself again to say that you're not worthy, you're not capable, and that you can't trust yourself because you didn't keep the promise to yourself. So here's a suggestion that I'm going to give. Instead of doing that, where you give yourself this crazy big attainable unattainable goal I should say put it into smaller categories 
much smaller steps. And when you start making those little, little steps every single day, those tiny steps every single day actually become really big changes over time. It's the daily doing, the daily working, that's what, that's what keeps you moving forward. You know, if you're not working on your dream, your focus, you're not focused on that every day, just a little bit, you're not gonna be able to move forward. But if you can just focus a little bit on what you're working on every single day, you're gonna notice big changes over time. So maybe instead of saying, I'm gonna lose 25 pounds and go to the gym and I'm gonna do this and that, say to yourself, I wanna be healthy. I'm going to, you know, take better care of myself. And you might say to yourself, in order to do that, you might say, I am going to, let's say you drink soda every day, like you drink diet soda every day. Um, maybe I'm going to add in, you know, four big glasses of water every single day. I mean, I have, this is my water bottle. This is 32 ounces. So I know if I drink three of the, these, I have 96 ounces. Plenty of water, cleaning out toxins, great. But I, I, I like it that it's this size because I just think, all right, I got to drink one of these before like 10 o'clock, the next one before one o'clock, and then the last one before bed, I need to finish it off. And preferably not too close to bedtime because if not, then you're peeing all night. But that's an example for water. Um, instead of saying, I'm gonna, go to, I'm gonna go to the gym seven days a week, you might say, I'm gonna walk twice a week after work. I am going to lift weights for 30 minutes um, on my lunch break. I am going to get up 30 minutes earlier and um, do a yoga exercise on, you know, from a YouTube channel. Whatever it is, but make it attainable. Don't make it so crazy that it's not realistic because then you're not going to follow through with it. And then that's where you just remind yourself like, hey, see, I'm not able, I'm not capable. You know, for those of you who are still in those unhealthy relationships, you might, you know, if you're, if you're stuck there, you're very afraid of leaving, then you might want to do little things like start saving money, start finding out places that you can live, start finding out if maybe, you know, what the, what the rules are, what the laws are in your um, state or in your country, because everywhere is a little bit different. If you have children with someone, you're in a very, very different place. You've got to make sure you're protecting your children on top of protecting you. So, you know, you've got some things, some little, little things to work on, but all those little things, working on your self-esteem, those are all going to build up over time. So setting those attainable goals are really, you know, so important. And, and I keep saying that for pretty much all of them. And I want you to kind of notice that when I'm, I'm talking about all these things, they're, they're all related. Some of them you might want to do like all at the same time. You know, it's not like you, you focus on one and then, okay, I got this, now I focus on the other one. You're really gonna focus on all of them. And realistically, as you continue on your journey, you continue on in your growth, you're going to be using all of these steps on a regular basis. These are what you're going to use to keep growing and learning. These are the things that I use all the time to just keep learning and growing. You know, we're always on a journey. As long as we're alive, we're on a journey. We're, we're learning lessons, we're growing. If you're not growing, you're dying, right? So you wanna continue to learn. So all of these different steps are all gonna be super helpful in your continued growth. And you're gonna get to a point, and, and I promise, you do the right work, you follow these steps, you do the right work, you're gonna get to a point where you're gonna look back and be like, wow, how did I ever deal with that for so long? You know, and I, I do that all the time. Like, who was I and where was I that I thought any of that was okay? Because I'm in such a different place now. You'll get there too. I want you to be able to get there. So here's some really great information. Oh, I guess before I share with you, I've got some really great offers for you. But before I do that, um, I just want to share one more really beautiful testimonial that I got. Um, before working with Steph, I was stuck in a job I didn't like with no passion for what I was doing. I was trying to get out and get a new job, but it wasn't happening. Steph helped me to be accountable for my thoughts and helping to figure out what I really wanted and be more specific on where I wanted to go. By being specific on my why and believing in myself and what I deserved, I now have more passion for life, not just in my new job, and now constantly write down my goals and reread and revisit them regularly. Stephanie taught me how to hold myself accountable and ask myself, what is holding me back? 
what my fears are, and this has been invaluable at removing roadblocks to get to my goals. So I want you to, to think back, you know, if you've listened to, my other, to the other two parts of this webinar, or you listened to today, I, I shared with you some of the actual testimonials from clients that I've, that I've worked with, and not one of them focused on relationships. There was not one that was like, oh my God, I found the man of my dreams. Because as you go through the process, the end result is really finding you. You are the person of your dreams. You are the one that you've been looking for. Once you really reconnect to that and you really start to understand that, finding a healthy relationship will be realistically the easy part. And I know for some of you are like, no, that's not, listen to me. Once you do the right work and you do all of these steps and you really look within and you really get yourself to where you need to be, the other stuff comes naturally. It comes easy, but you have to do the right work because if not, you're just going to continue the cycle over and over again. If you've ever seen the movie, The Matrix, I love that movie. Um, and there's a scene in there where they take Neo, and it's the very, very beginning, and they take him into a car, and he's like, get me out, I don't wanna be in here. And they open up the door, and they say, look, you've been down that road before. You know where it takes you. Do you want to see what the road ahead is? And forget, forgive me for messing up the, the, the rest of that, but the, the part of you've been down that road before. You've been down that road before. You know what it's like walking on eggshells. You know what it's like laying in bed being depressed. You know what it's like crying to yourself. You know what it's like worrying that, you know, the person that you're with is, is not the right person. You're, 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 you know what it's like to feel like there's something more for you out there and that you're wasting your life. I don't want you on your deathbed to look back and say, or to think in your final moments, to look back and say, I think there was more. I feel like I missed out. I don't want that for you. For you, what I want is for you to say, hey, this was an amazing life that I was so lucky to experience. I want you to be able to say, wow, that was a crazy ride and in such a good way and so amazing. That's what I want for you. So I really would like to be a part of your journey. And I know for a lot of people that, you know, if you watch these um, three different webinars, it's a lot of information. It is. And I know how difficult it is and I know how lonely it can feel as you're going through all of this process. So I would like to be a part of your team. I would like to help you. I remember what it was like to feel alone. I remember what it was like to feel like nobody was helping me, that no one was available to me, that I was doing this all by myself. I remember what that felt like and I don't want that for you. I want for you to be able to feel supported and feel like there's someone who's been there, done that and on the other side. The next thing I wanted to show, share with you as another opportunity is I mentioned earlier that I'm speaking at a woman's conference over the summer. It's actually August 24th to August 26th. It's in Charleston, South Carolina. And this is, I wanted to bring this up during this webinar because this has to do with your passion quest. This has to do with discovering who you are, with opening yourself up to abundance, with creating your tribe, all of those things. So I wanted to share that with you um, here because this is an opportunity. There are four spots available for this one. So you've got to, it's, it's going to go quickly as well. There's only four spots. So I'm just going to read to you the description that I was sent from the people doing this retreat. Um, it says, has your money story been keeping you from living a life of abundance? Ready to change that. I'm looking for adventurous women who are looking to treat themselves, explore the unknown within, meet other like-minded females, and step into their high vibe money mojo for a retreat set in picturesque Charleston, South Carolina at the end of August. I am one of the six speakers at the retreat and I am allowed to invite four women to come with me on this adventure. So I kind of had this idea of like, 
how when I went cross country and went to Montana and I went with, with me and one of my friends, this would be our adventure that we got to do together. So it would be me, you know, four people that I can invite. Um, if you're ready to step into more intuition, step more into your femininity, femininity, I can't say that word, femininity, <laughs> and shift your old limiting beliefs around money so you can live in full abundance, then send me a message so we can talk more about it. So this is completely different. That is not my program. Um, oh, P.S. This experience is full of luxury giveaways, schooner rides, haunted carriage rides, and so much more. Remember, there are only four spots, so even if you just want more information about it, don't hesitate to reach out. So again, this, that is not my program, but I am one of the ones who is lucky enough to speak at this program. Um, so we'll get to spend the weekend together and we'll all be on an adventure with another just like amazing group of women that are all going to be a community and inspire and, and have just a great time together. So if you're interested in that, that is four um, spots available and we can chat about that and you know figure out a time to talk more about that. So lots of really great information. Um, it's, it's time. It's time to stop putting everyone else before yourself. It's time to stop worrying that your children, your children are gonna follow the same footsteps. It's, it's time to stop walking on eggshells and living a half-life and not really giving the world all the wonderful things that you have. Each one of us is here for a purpose. We all have a reason for being here. And you not living that purpose, you not sharing your gift with the world actually does a disservice for all of us. I want you to be healthy. I don't want you to be on the couch watching life pass you by. I don't want you on your deathbed saying there had to have been more. I don't want you wishing, I wonder what love could have been like. I wonder if there really is such thing as, as a, you know, a real life partner. I wonder, you know, I, I don't want any of those things for you. I want you to be happy. I want you to be supported and to not feel alone and realize that you are your own knight in shining armor. You are the one that making this step of making this decision to get this program, work with someone else, you know, have me part of your team. All of these things are going to help you on your journey of growth because again, you've been down that road before. You know what it's like. This is the day, this is the day that you get to choose and stand up for yourself and say, you know what? I'm not doing that anymore. I am not going to put myself in a place where I am last. I am, port I am important, I matter. And anyone who gets to spend time with me is lucky. And when you really get to feel that, you really experience that, there's nothing that's gonna hold you back you're going to be able to grow and in, into the most wonderful person that you were meant to be. And that's what I want for you. So are there any questions? Um, I know sometimes there are people on that I don't see. So there might, if there's any questions, please feel free to ask them, um, type, you know, type in whatever questions you have. If not, um, I will make sure that I am going back and reading whatever questions that anyone has and I will answer whatever questions that you do have. So please, you know, anything at all that you have any questions about, please, please, please feel free to write them in. I will respond to every single question. No question is stupid. No question is unimportant. I wa really want to be able to answer everything to you. Um, and you know, I'm just gonna, just gonna say this again. I, I remember wondering when I was with other relationships. I remember wondering if there was more. I remember thinking to myself, is there something else out there for me? And I was scared, but I decided to jump, to dive right in and make a decision to make a change. And it was scary. It was hard hard. It got more difficult before it got easier. It was one of the more difficult experiences that I've had in my life. But kind of like you think of the phoenix or the caterpillar coming out of the cocoon, once you go through all those trials and tribulations, 
and you come back and you see the lessons that were there for you and the opportunity for growth and the forgiveness and the joy and the abundance and all the wonderful things. I mean, I seriously look sometimes, I, I look around and I tear up, you know, when we're, my family, when we're bouncing around to music or, you know, just having a good conversation or, you know, just spending time together. And I think to myself, this would not be had I not made that decision. And I know that a lot of people are stuck in that spot before here. They're like, I don't know, they're teetering. Coming from the other side, having been through it, and now seeing how wonderful it is, and I can't even explain to you that the feelings that are associated with that, that freedom and that growth. I want this for you. I want you to wake up every day and say, ah, I'm so lucky that I get to do this again. What cool adventures are gonna happen today? Not, oh, how's he gonna be? Are they gonna be in a bad mood? Am I gonna have to watch what I'm saying? Am I gonna have to watch what I'm doing? Are they gonna be angry? Is there gonna be a fight this time when I go out? I don't want you to, th to live that way anymore. I want you to live here where every day is an adventure and every day is, you're just excited to see like what cool things are in store for you.